What's up guys, it's Elliot again. We're here at Featherbed Court and a wonderful uh, farm over in Oxfordshire. What the guys have done here is, is really interesting as they've created a diverse business. They do traditional arable, uh, glamping, and more importantly, and what we're really interested in today is hydroponics. What's up guys, it's Elliot from Urban Farm it here again. Over the coming few days, we're gonna be traveling all over the country, meeting different food growers, and finding out what does it take how do you start a food growing business? So for those of you who don't know, hydroponics can seem like a daunting and, and totally unknown thing. Uh, but really, it's actually beautifully simple. Hydroponics is literally soilless growth. So uh, any form of growing where you're not using soil as your main growing medium. This here is just one type of hydroponics. So Harry, why don't you run us through it? So what, what we have here, we have, um, we have a bag full of coconut husk, mm -hmm. which is the main starting point. So that's, that's soilless, which class it's hydroponic. Yeah. Um, this is just a complete blank canvas of nothingness. Um, just a, just a, a holding media for the roots? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll pull some out and we'll show it off a bit. Um, you know, it's a, it's a free draining substrate. Um, you see it down there. So the, the roots aren't sitting in, in wet and cold. They're, you know, the, the water and the nutrients are constantly flowing through. Yeah. Um, it's completely neutral, so you know all the food that you give to it, that is the only thing that this plant has eaten. Yeah. Um, you've got that clean slate. Um, all the food and water comes in through these drippers here. So we've got these little black drippers um, and they, they cycle up, they're all run on sensors. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got two different sensor points in the greenhouse. Um, we're measuring moisture of the bags, temperature of the bags. Yeah. Um, and we put in the set points into the computer. Mm -hmm. As soon as it gets to a certain moisture, the irrigation system will fire up and yep. it'll, it'll feed and water the plant. Anything the plant doesn't take drops into this tray down here. Mm -hmm. And then this gets measured. So if there's a large volume of water coming you know, off, you're, you know you're, we, you're... we know we're giving it too much. Yep. We also measure how much fertilizer comes off as well. Yep. So we know next time we can give it less fertilizer. Yeah, and I think that what you touched on there is one of the reasons why I'm so big in the concept of hydroponics. You know, it, There are lots of guys out there who are strict soil guys, but the great thing about using a controlled loop system like this is that you know precisely what your output is uh, and therefore you can monitor it and control it so there's almost zero waste. You know, there's no um, nitrogen leaking into, into the rivers and, and all the traditional problems with f using fertilizer in an agriculture setting. I mean, so we're here, we're looking at <laughs> the final product more or less. How about we take a little walk around the farm and you show us A to Z. What we have here is our um, control room of the greenhouse. Uh, this is basically what I like to call the brains of it. Um, water comes in from this bottom end down here, comes into the pump, gets filtered out, any algae or anything in the water, comes into the rig, which is a feed rig, uh, gets dosed up with any fertilizers that the rig instructs it to take in. Um, it's all a computer controlled system, and then gets fired into another filter and off into the valves, straight up to the greenhouse. Why don't you sort of give us an idea of the, the pathway from seed to fruit uh, for plants that, that are grown here at Featherbed? So, so each, um, each plant comes in as a tray plant or a, a bare root plant. Mm -hmm. um, they come to the farm frozen. Wow. Um, we keep them chilled and frozen and then we'll pull them out on the day, slowly defrost them, but not too much because mm -hmm. what we want to do, we want to plant them up and then give them a shot of water, give them a shot of food, mm -hmm. and then suddenly they'll just spurt into life. Yeah. Um, because you know they've gone from being in that dormant, frozen, horrible state <laughs> to suddenly being given everything they ever wanted. Yeah. Um, and then he'll go on, this time of year, we'd probably expect fruit after six weeks. Really? Wow, that fast? From tray plant, yeah. And so what, what sort of, from tray plant to fruit bearing plant, how many times bigger is that? Oh, the, the plants are phenomenal. You know, we, if you have a look over here, we would have plants touching each other right on either side in of the six road. weeks from this mm. that's amazing and so do you have to do anything to the plant to encourage fruiting do you maybe change the conditions change the the, the we, nutrient we, solution we give, it, we give it optimal 
growing conditions. Um, we give it enough carbon dioxide so mm -hmm. the plant can photosynthesize and create more of its own food. If it can't create that much of its own food, then we supplement it with um, N, P's, K's, yeah. calciums, borons, you know. <laughs> you name it. Everything. <laughs> One of the, the most important things actually is keeping this place cold at night. Mm. Um, a lot easier said than done. Mm. But what happens is if it's too warm, the plant will think it's awake and it thinks it's awake so it wants to eat, like yeah. we all do. Um, and it'll eat out of its own sugar stores. Right. And the sugar stores are the fruit. Mm -hmm. So if you have a warm night, all of a sudden you're producing fruit which won't have any sugar in it. Um, so that won't sell. So you want to keep a cold night, make sure the plant fully shuts down overnight and then come sunrise in the morning, normally about half an hour after sunrise, mm -hmm. we give it a shot of water, um, sunlight comes out and bang, the plant's back into life again. I mean, it, it's basically the same, the same rules as with people and fungi, you know, mm. stay stress-free, get enough rest and you'll grow. So Harry, you know, a big problem in any intensive agriculture uh, is pests, funguses, diseases, things like that. Uh, in such, uh, you know, an intensive environment, how do you control those things? Well, we, you know, we have to bring in certain different biological ways of controlling it. You know, we, we have probably released somewhere in the region of about 15 million predators into the atmosphere. <laughs> um, not into the atmosphere, technically, into the... Into, into the greenhouse. Yeah. Um, another way of controlling things is this little yellow sticky trap up behind us. Um, so he's a monitoring trap. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll put him up there, come back and check a week later, see what's on it see what there's more of, and then we know which predator to then go and release the next week. I see, yeah. Uh, so, so you guys are a big advocates of natural solutions uh, to natural problems. There's a tiny little wasp we have, and he'll go around and he'll sting an aphid, and he'll lay this egg inside the aphid, and then that egg will hatch, and just basically eat this aphid from the inside out. <laughs> it is, it is I mean, nature's, nature's beautiful and, and hardcore, there's, yeah. There's, there's, a, um, there's a whole load of blind spiders we've released. You know, they can't see anything. Whenever a plant gets attacked by a threat, yep. that plant releases this tiny little hormone. Mm -hmm. And this blind spider can pick up that hormone, can go to where the plant's been attacked, find the threat, eat it, and then go home again. Mm, brilliant. It's, it's bonkers. So, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, although on the face of it, super futuristic controlled forms of agriculture might not seem like they work in harmony with nature but if you can apply a permaculture type mentality to how you deal with pests and if you can keep everything in a closed loop you know that is probably the best way of preserving our land for the future and continuing with our agriculture. Although it might not look like the most natural way to grow our food I believe that hydroponics holds the key to a lot of the problems with agricultural future in the UK. Not only can we grow it intensively in urban spaces, but in a closed loop system so that our impact on our environment is as little as possible. We've had a brilliant time here today with Harry and the team. Why not try growing hydroponics on a small scale at home? We'll see you next time.